What's going on guys? How are we all? Hope everyone's doing well. So um, today is Wednesday, the 29th, 8th, 28th of August. So morning session is tomorrow. So uh, I've bought my tires, I've pre-entered, paid everything. Um, and pretty much the plan is for today, I'm gonna go get Adam. We're gonna head out to the workshop and try and get this hot side completely sorted today. So I've decided I'm just gonna go external gate, I'm gonna go 38 mil X gate on the top of the manifold. Um, so Adam's gonna come out and help me because obviously he's a far better welder than I am. And uh, hopefully we get this hot side all off, get all this wastegate done, installed, welded up, painted up, get it all back on the car, get it all loaded back up. And then I'm gonna be back here tonight because uh, Adam and I are both house sitting at the moment. So we need to be back tonight to feed dogs and etc. And uh, yeah, then I can go to morning session tomorrow. So, gonna be a mission. Hope you enjoy the ride. So, massive thank you to Adam for helping me out lately. He's been helping out a lot since I started driving, but um, he doesn't even watch these videos, so he won't even see it, but massive, massive thank you to Adam. Um, it's gonna be awesome. Fuck you, Adam. Oh. That's an S13 river. What's that? Yeah, that's an S13 river. Ah. Is that uh, I have been acquiring parts for the S13, slowly. Ah, you're ahead of me. I bought that uh, a little while ago. I just have been meaning to take it out to the workshop for ages. Close the door on me, fuck ah. me dead. Fuck me dead, mate. Huh? Fuck, close the door on me, mate. Mm. <laughs> 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 Fucking strange. <laughs> The other thing I should really do today, if I have time, is actually check the front brakes on this Falcon because it is starting to get up a pretty bad shutter under heavy braking. And um, yeah, these front brakes, I don't think are too happy. So I got those ones off Cody, as you would have saw when I drove QR, I think I got those ones. So I do have some fresh pads and rotors, or pretty fresh rotors there and pads. So I might have to pull the fronts off these, have a look and maybe change them over because it's starting to sound like a truck when you're braking, like it's got a Jake brake. <laughs> Got it all, mate. I think that's everything. Got all the beans. All the beans. Not many up here. It's <laughs> too early. For once, we're actually kind of on time. Yeah. I saw you go over the bridge, and it was before six o'clock, and I'll be. I was like, oh fuck. I did message you and said I'm on the way. Yeah, no, I saw that. That's why I was looking out over the bridge. Goodness. Looked over the bridge. All right. And you were. And we're off. All right, did make it. Uh, got here at like 8.30, so that's all right. Not too bad, it's a shitty day out here. Terrible, terrible day. But anyway, this is uh, somewhat the plan, as Adam is demonstrating here. So, a bit of uh, 38 mil off the main A-fold, like so. Gate off the back of it, the top. And then, yeah, that. Hmm. Cool, so Adam's got some steam pipe here, which is going to let me have, which is going to be good to weld to the cast. Obviously it's going to be a lot better than welding stainless straight to cast. So, go steam pipe the cast. Then um, I have down in the shed, which I'll go grab now, um, some two, I've got two 38mm waste gates, so I'll grab them both, bring them up and have a look at which one I'm going to use. Um, and I've got two manifolds down there, which are absolutely trash. Uh, Two stainless manifolds which have been completely binned, completely cracked. Pretty much useless for anything else. So what I'm going to do with them is grab them both, uh, lop both the two bot flanges off each one, and then use all of the different parts of the manifold for bends and stuff to try and actually get this sort of plumbed in and get it to work. So it will be steam pipe to the cast, and then stainless to the steam pipe, and then it'll be stainless down to the dump. So yeah, so we'll do all the measuring, work it out in the head, get it all like sort of mocked up a little bit, or at least an idea first. Then we'll uh, pull this whole hot side off and go at actually cutting holes and welding and getting this thing under control. Session beans. Yeah, it should be all right. Not you know, great, mate. But all right. No, mate, it should be good, mate. Alrighty, so this is what I've come up with. So um, this is actually my old RB30 manifold that used to run on this car with the old setup, but uh, massively cracked, pretty much unusable. So good for flanges and for bends and whatnot to make that 
what? So this is my 38mm 2 bolt flange. This is going to be another flange I'm going to pinch uh, off another. This is an RB25 manifold that I actually bought from a shop in Slacks Creek, which is absolutely fucked. It was sold to me as a um, strengthened manifold. And it's uh, all sorts of cracks and absolutely disgusting. Looks like someone's been at it with a stick welder. Uh, these are my two 38mm gates. Again, this is the old gate off the setup of that car, which I actually lost the searing out of and conveniently found like a few months ago, just found it in a box. Well, so that's fair enough. And uh, this just came off a part out off one of the RB25 Sylvia's. Uh, this is the wastegate I am going to use. It feels, uh, the spring feels quite soft in it at the moment. So um, I'll probably just run this and the boost controller. I've got a boost controller. Somewhere around here, it's actually my old boost controller, I got it back off Luke, so run this gate, use these manifolds to cut up and weld up uh, our plumb back and, uh, and the rest of it, and um, I bought this up, I'm just going to pull it down and see what springs in it, and then see what sort of springs in that one and that, but I don't know, I'm not that worried about it, so that's, uh, that's the plan, that's what we're going to do, so it's uh, going to be a pretty big day. So I'll get stuck into it, try and get it done. Right, oh, so just assessing underneath this car while I get the exhaust off, getting this turbo off. You can see where that big thing I hit at Friday night drift sort of hit that. Made a big dent there. Big dent on the floor and scraped it. I don't know what that was. It was something massive on track that me hit. I hit when Alex was in the car. What a pain. Me uh, little centre bearing uh, modification is, is holding up pretty well. There's a bit of movement and I think the rubber's moved a little bit, but it's um, certainly better than it was before, so that's good. And yeah, this diff, this diff is just sort of leaking quite a bit. Um, I'm pretty sure that the only way I'm going to be able to fix that is to actually pull the back cover off and uh, re-silicon it up and put it back together. So, yeah, not too sure about that one. Um, that might be another day. It might be just to degrease it for now. But uh, there's a fair bit of leakage out of it. I'll check the I'll check the uh, how much fluid's in there, and I'll top it up at least for tomorrow. But I don't think I'm going to be able to fix it today. But it's definitely something that's I'm gonna have to look at for sure. Um, but yeah, no, it's all pretty good. So anyway, I'll rip this exhaust out and uh, get it the turbo feed in return from down here. Undo them, ready for this hot side to come out when it needs to. Adam's just cleaning up some flanges. Mm, one flange go. done. One flange. Got this one to do. Not going to do here, yeah, nice. They're up. Sweet, repurposing. Yeah. Recycling. Material is material, mate. That's it, mate. That's it. It's big dollars there, big dollars. <laughs> Fuck shit, lads. <laughs> I swear I had two 38mm gate flanges. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know where they went, eh? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, things like this is exactly the reason I put this here. So the things like this don't smash up into the uh, hot side and cause more problems. Anyway, tell you what, whoever designed this uh, setup knew what they were doing. <laughs> just, <laughs> ah, ah, ah. just undo your V-bands, undo your two nuts, it just hangs on that. You can put all your tools away on the bench, you have to drop them on the floor, come back, lift the exhaust out. Yeah, not bad. Got Dad helping out as well. Dad's fishing out our tire machine because I can't seem to get anyone around here to actually fit tires for me today or no one give me a certain answer. And a uh, local bloke pretty much told me he might be able to after lunch and uh, obviously when I've already invested like $500 into driving tomorrow, I sort of need them fitted today. So we're just going to dig out our tire machine which has been down the back under the tarp for a long time and uh, bring it up here and try and fit some tires. <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, that needs to happen. So anyway, it's uh, needless to say, it's going to be a pretty big day. We actually have a lot to do. Hence the reason I don't think I'll be able to get that diff sorted today. But it is something that's going to have to happen later for sure. How you going, Adam? This is kind of cool. Yeah, I've got a big pair of them as well. They're yeah. really, really good. I've never seen those. Yeah, they're sick, are they? Yeah. Nipex, mate. Mm. That's the shit. So I've got here my nice new Nolophane front sway bar link bushes. So I figured uh, while it's up in the air, I may as well chuck those in. So that'll be nice. And now uh, that's just about all the bushes in the front done then. That's going to be good. Mmm, new, new sway bar link bushes. So it's pretty much all the bushes at the front end of this thing are new now. Uh, also checking out this sump plug is weeping again, which is a pain. But again, it's one of those things that was sort of expected. The steer tires are holding up pretty good. A bit of beating and stuff, but... Uh, Oh, yeah, nice. 
Pretty good. I might get a set of those picks later on. Um, the other good thing about them is I'm pretty sure they're rotational, but I don't think they have an outside. No, so I'm, not. you can put them on there. I'm pretty side. sure, yeah, I should be able to swap them over when they get a bit more Campbell wear. Mm. Just swap them over and get a few more days out of them. So that's pretty cool. Very cool and good. So, yep. yeah. Very good. Something along those lines. Are you thinking we should, um, what are you thinking about the, like the plumb back? Do you reckon we should angle the gate back a little bit towards the motor? Like tilt it like that? Yeah, like that. So, so it comes back and down like that? Yeah, so it's just on that side of the O2. Yeah, we could probably do that. Yeah. Try and keep it straight and then go down. Yeah, down that hole there a bit. Yeah. Either that, I don't know, it's up to you, whichever you think is going to be easier. No, that'll probably be, that'll probably be easiest. But, um, for, for now I'll tack that flange under there. Yep. And then I can rotate it on there. Yep, sweet as. Cut that then, hole and yeah, shit. Yeah, maybe mark that before we take it off. So. Yeah. I brought some hole saws. I got a 38mm hole saw. Yes. Yeah, sweet. Did you say you had a 40? I don't know, I'll have a look in a kit. But... Yeah. Because this is obviously, it's 41 OD. Yep. So. Oh, well, like I said, if we need to, we can just cut it with 38 and use the diagram and then get it perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Should be sweet. Cool beans. I don't think we'll need to oval no, it much at all because it pretty much just goes straight in. Like, I was thinking we might go on that angle, but there's not enough room with the size of this fucking yeah. hat. So I mean, It's not ideal gate placement, but there's not really much else we can do about it. No, no. If you had a little small, like a little one, and try and angle it that way so it flows yeah, into, into that it. way, but... Gotta work with what we got. Hmm. I wonder if we should just put it higher up as well. Look up there. <laughs> not there. Uh, I think about there should be alright. Yeah, okay. Somewhere yeah. around there. Because it beans. still sort of like comes out like that, right? If you put it up there, it's sort of like, yeah, yeah. I think about there. Yeah, It'd okay. be pretty nice. Should be right. Should be right, mate. It's, yeah, it's not like too severe. It's not like, like gas is still straight out. Like, it's not like it has to do a U turn or fucking anything retarded. No. So it should be alright. Yeah, it should be alright. We'll see. Yeah. Definitely gonna be better than what's in there at the moment. Yeah, which is nothing. Dude. Yeah. Alright, so we've got our makeshift uh, weldy table set up. You can close these doors if you want while you're welding them. Oh, only if it's, it gets windy. No worries. Yeah, I've right. done everything except the gas. Put the gas yourself. Sick. Yeah, sick. And uh, I was just blowing out the air filter because it's full of dust from Archie. So give that a bit of a blue out. Then I might get started on fitting some uh, tyres over here in the tyre machine. This is our old gang tyre machine we got from, oh, I think we bought it from the old Palmer's tyre shop years ago. Very old, old tyre machine. Only does up to like, I think, 16s. I don't think it does 17s. But anyway, should do my 15s alright. So yeah, it's just going to be a matter of trying to get it done. Yeah, it's pretty old. <laughs> old school. But either way, as long as I get some tyres on there, that's alright. Alright, Adam, master elder, welder at work here. He's, yeah. Uh, not just a pretty face. <laughs> yeah. Oh, very good. I've got heaps more gloves around if you want them as well. No, nah, these are good. I like these ones, eh? Right. They're Marty's gloves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, it was a bit, the flange was a bit shitty. Did you want that at 120 amp? Yeah. Holy smack. Yeah, I tacked it on 160 and then I welded it on 120. Frost, yeah, so plenty of heat in there, guys. Yeah. So is that just straight to the steam pot? Yeah. Yeah. Wicked. So just, yeah. Just, yeah. That flange is, is a bit dirty, so I pulled a bit of shit, as you can see on top of the weld. There's a yeah. little bit of crap on top of there. Yep. Just pulled it out, but I'm not concerned with it weren't breaking or anything. I put a lot of heat in it, so. Yep. Wicked. Cheers, yeah. mate. So now I weld that to the cast. Ah, uh, yep, that's looking pretty perfect to me. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon that'd be good. And just try there. and bring that down behind, like on the other side of that O2. Yeah, yep. go straight over it and down and in. That'd be good. I'll heat wrap that anyway, try and protect that O2 a bit. Yeah, the O2 is probably cooked anyway. It's like really close to the turbo. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> still working alright though. I'll recalibrate it today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's still working pretty well. So it will go through sensors faster than it should, but that's alright. Yeah. Ah, very good. I like it, mate. So it looks good to me. Alrighty. All right. I'm having a little bit of success with wheels. I got one changed over, one tire fitted. 
Took me a while to figure out this tire machine, but got it a bit sorted now. And obviously, because these are so hard and old, they're a real prick to get off. But uh, I think I've got it sorted now. Should be able to glide through the rest of them all right. So that's good. Tires, there we go. And I don't have to pay for them, which is good. Really, really good. Anyway, time to pull this hot side off and uh, start on this manifold. I think that'll be good, eh? Looks good to me, man. Mm. Yeah! So, the hot side is off. Very good. Not bad at all. Got this all marked up, ready to go. So, as you can see, these are actually like a pulse split entry manifold thing. So, yeah, we'll see where we go with that. Gonna have to do a bit of, uh, yeah, fabri fabrication, really. We'll see how we go. I was thinking of just cutting the friggin' thing out, but then I'm also thinking that it's probably better to leave part of it, well, most of it in there for, you know, structural, because it's cast and mm, shit like that. So, obviously we'll drill into it and recess it a little bit in there, but we might not take the whole thing out. We'll see how we go. You might have to offset that hole then as all. Well. Offset it on the rib. Offset it. Well, otherwise your pilot's gonna go try and go through the fucking... Oh no, I'll put the pilot in the center still. It'll be alright, I'll just drill into it. Ah, uh, yeah, because the whole, yeah, it'll be alright. It'll be alright, mate. <laughs> <laughs> righto, so I didn't really have time to actually get gaskets, like two bolt gate flange gaskets. Um, so I don't have any gaskets for these, so what I'm going to do, this is the best two ports, I suppose, off the old exhaust gasket that I just pulled off. So I've cut them up, they're actually the perfect size, even the holes line up, so. My plan is to just uh, copper spray the crap out of these, use heaps of mani seal, and uh, just reuse these two gaskets for the uh, the gate flanges. I mean, they're, they're going to be too big for the flange. It's going to look gross, but it's going to work. Um, so that'll be okay. So I'm just going to use these two with uh, heaps of mani seal, heaps of copper fucking spray, and hopefully that works out. Okay. That's my plan. That's my story. That'll be okay. It's going to take a little bit to cut through it. It's much better than doing it by hand though. It'll, it'll cut through quicker like this too. So good. Even pressure, etc. Yeah. Smoothing it up a little bit. Looking much nice and better. -er. Where's Very my north. beast gone? So you can see there the size difference on the port on the back of the turbo and the internal gate compared to what size a 38 mil gate is. So not only that, the actual uh, the position as in the way gases flow, the positioning of that is going to be much better than the way uh, the internal gate is positioned on the inside of the housing in the uh, turbo. So what I've decided to do, instead of actually welding the internal gate port shut, I've put the actuator back on. So I've put the actuator back on. I've actually adjusted this rod like all the way up as far as I can so that it's almost locked solid. And I'm just not gonna run a reference to it. 
Um, that means two things. One thing, it's less work for us because we don't have to weld it because it's in a real prick of a spot. It's a real hard thing to weld. Um, so it's one less thing that we have to do, which saves us time. Uh, secondly, it means that if this turbo ever comes off this car and I decide to upgrade or whatever, uh, the internal gate on that turbo is still going to work and be usable um, for, for a smaller car if someone desires. So um, that's what I've decided to do. Oh yeah, it's all good. Just looking on the side of the block on the head here. I don't know, it's... There are a few... Uh, questionable bits and pieces on the block you can sort of see where it's a bit oily in some places from under that head so oh no yeah i don't know might be all right might be a problem we'll just pretend we didn't see that <laughs> either way the head gasket's on its way out it's uh may as well get finished off so not going to stop me it's not going to stop my bin motor. It's only a head gasket. It'll be right. It's only a gasket. <laughs> no. Ooh la la. Ooh la. Blah blah blah. Fuck yeah. Fucking oath. That'll do it. Schizo, mate. Preosh mm. 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 heater. So what you want to do with that cast is just preheat it till it's just cherry hot. Um, once it's cherry hot, we just gave it a blast with brake clean and it cleaned it right up and a bit of a blow off. Now Adam's gonna weld it. Yep. Give it the beans. Give it the beans. So the reason behind that is just because cast uh, takes so much longer to heat up than the other material. So in order to get good penetration of both materials, you really need to preheat the cast it's so awesome. that it can stay hot and then it doesn't cool too fast. Yeah, it's also it's a lot to do with the cooling process. So like when it cools through here, it will it'll stress and be, like it'll crack because of the stresses but if you heat the whole thing the whole thing heats up you weld it doesn't really affect it too much and then the whole thing cools out and doesn't have as many stresses i'm also going to stagger my weld so i'll probably weld a bit here a bit there to like just sort of like even out the stresses so hopefully it doesn't crack hopefully not hopefully not how hot is it <laughs> fucking that is it still hot yeah, it'll be hot enough. Alright, give it the beans. Should be hot enough. Yeah, it'll be hot enough. Yeah, I'm welding just on max, just so. Yeah. 70 amps. Yeah, I think it should be alright. So I might actually turn the compressor off so it doesn't kick in and you uh, feel that. Welding so much nicer. Being preheated. That's good. Oh, yeah. You can't be standing up or? Yeah, dude. You can already hear it cracking and carrying on. So uh, anyway, looking at this pretty closely, it's hard to see on camera, but you can see there is a fair bit of oil coming down there and there's a bit of oil sitting on the actual head gasket where you can see it in there. So I don't know, I think this head gasket is probably uh, on its way out. Um, so we'll just have to cover it in shit. Anyway, um, pretty much just gonna send it anyway until it's dead. Um, like I said, I don't have much invested in this motor, so the very worst it goes and then water mixes my oil, bins my bearings. I'm just up for new bearings again, so not that worried about it, but uh, after this morning session I'll probably work on maybe doing the head gasket before Matsuri. What did it do? Oh, true. Holy shit, that's never happened before. Ceramic cup went kaboom. Holy shit. Wow, that's really weird. Hectic. Fuck, I better chuck this one on quickly before it cools down. That's wow. crazy ass shit. That's really weird. Mm, nice. So yeah, after morning session tomorrow, I might do like a comp test on it, see what comes back as. Uh, obviously that's why it's good to have done that first comp test, so that at least then you know um, what you're doing as far as using the same compression tester setup and seeing what readings come back. So I'll be able to know if it's dropped considerably 
Uh, the other thing, it could have just been from head, head lift. Head could have been lifting at that 16 pound, so getting the gate pressure or getting the gate sorted out and getting boost pressure sorted out might it might just be all right. Um, might actually have done any damage to the head gasket. It might have just been the head lifting. So uh, it's just one of those things we just got to wait and see. But uh, yeah, chances are if the head's lifted, the head gasket's toast. Um, I wouldn't hold that much much hope for it. But uh, at the very least, I'm just going to keep sending it until it dies because as long as it's still driving, I'm going to keep skidding it. Yeah, nice. Very good. So the other thing that would be ideal with cast is to, if we had a sunny day, sit it out in the sun to cool. Um, I suppose we still can yeah. sit it out in the sun as best we can. Um, either that or like a big bucket of sand or something, just something so that it uh, doesn't cool too fast, so that it sort of cools very naturally and, and sort of slowly. Uh, you don't want that cast to cool too quick because um, no. that's, that's what causes lots of problems. So. Looks like I got, like there's not blobs of penetration, but you can definitely see the heat coming through. There's a couple of little blobs, so like Sweet. I was welding as hot as that welder will weld and yep. I wasn't rushing it, so Very I think cool. it'll be, I think it'll be pretty good. Jeez, mate, that looks fuck good, mate. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> The veins! Give it a vein! So we got the turbo back on the manifold. Um, same thing, it's a brand new T3 gasket. We bought a new T3 gasket and a new exhaust gasket, which is probably a shame because it's looking like probably after tomorrow, it's all gonna have to come back off so I can uh, fish his head gasket maybe. Anyway, we'll find out. Uh, same thing as always, clean up gasket area uh, surfaces with uh, some thinner thinners and uh, plenty of the Permatex copper gasket spray. Um, I like to have my gaskets swimming in it. So plenty of that. And um, yeah, this manifold and turbo can go back in. So we can whack the gate on top and then we can start looking at fabbing up the plumb back or screamer, whatever. Plumb back pipe. Yeah, we'll Actually see. Actually a plumb back pipe. The only other thing is that it's got to be one piece with the dump and it's got to be able to get in and out of there. Yeah, if so. it has to come down, go down instead of up, so be it, whatever. We'll see how. <coughs> we'll find out. Anyway, we'll get this in and then go from there. All right, haven't been filming much because we've been super, super, super busy. <laughs> We were, we were running out of time, starting to get pretty dark. Uh, I think it's like close to five o'clock now. So, uh, but the manifold and everything is back in. You can see uh, my reference there. I put some bit of heat shielding on it. It comes up to the booster here, which then goes through the gate there. And we have decided to just do a screamer at this point. So screamer's just gonna go straight down between the 
dumping the chasserelle there and probably just point back a little bit. Not ideal, but uh, we don't really have time to screw around trying to get it plumbed back in tonight. Uh, we're running out of time, we've got to get back to the coast. So that's what's been decided, just uh, for ease of making it happen and making it happen quick. Straight so, down, and then a little bend at the bottom. At the moment, it's not going to be permanent, but um, that's just, I'm going to see how loud it is with it. <laughs> uh, if it's not ridiculously loud, I might leave it. But anyway, for now, it's uh, going to do for morning sesh tomorrow. So apart from that, just about everything's back together except for the exhaust that has to go back in. Um, I To get that hard line on the feed on the turbo was an absolute prick and we ended up bending it and putting a little bit of a kink in it. So it's a bit of a question mark over that oil feed for that turbo now. So we might be in a turbo tomorrow. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, might be in a head gasket tomorrow, might be in a turbo, who knows. But we're gonna do our best to find out. And uh, hopefully have some half decent boost control. So that'll be good. Check it out. You can fit six wheels in the boot. What a vehicle. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful. Very good. Adam's over here doing fabricated. So anyway, it's been a massive mission, but we are getting to the pointy end now. My ghetto gaskets look absolutely crazy. <laughs> it's uh, pretty wild, but anyway, whatever. Whatever works, and whatever didn't cost me anything at this point. So, we are at the pointy end, we're nearly back together, which means we can nearly load up, which means we can nearly get on our merry way almost. We've made a mess of the shed, which we're not gonna get a chance to clean, which is annoying, but it is what it is. Oh. What a mission. Drift yeah. life. Drift you gotta do what life. you got to do to get to the track, I guess. That's it. That's it. Got Adam here painting, uh, yeah, welding up the screamer. Doing a bit of Shut up, mate. Painting with metal. Shut up. Adam here welding up the screamer pot. As you can see, it's getting very late, very dark. Um, I pulled the bung off the diff, as I suspected, with uh, a lot of things that leak oil. It uh, looks like a lot, but... Hardly any leaked out, diff still got plenty of oil in it, so uh, I just degreased that, gave it a bit of a clean up, put the bung back in, also just checked the gearbox oil again, once again it's full too, um, so all good for fluids, everything's all good, pretty much just uh, now everything's back together, ready to go, just waiting uh, once Adam has finished welding up the screamer, we'll whack it on, then we'll just go for a test drive, make sure it works, and um, yeah, as long as it works, all good. I'll chuck it on the trailer and then we can screw around with the actual boost settings tomorrow at the track. Anyway, I'm just going to see with this screamer. Um, you will see it is an extremely long screamer because the wastegate's so high in the engine bay. So the screamer is actually quite long. So if it doesn't make like a ridiculous racket, um, I've actually, we've routed it so that it's quite hidden from the top. It's hard to see. Uh, so as long as it's not too loud for like Archie, well then I'd be happy to probably just about leave the screamer as a screamer. So I'm just gonna wait and see. And just burnt the fucking shit out of my little thingy. Fucking, have a look at that. Fucking filler wire burns suck. That looks really fast. Fast? <laughs> yeah. So that is it the screamer. Screamer. Fast. Alrighty. This is what we're left with, the complete setup. As you can see, the gaskets look completely retarded, but whatever. Painted up black looks alright, it'll probably look like terrible crap tomorrow. And this is the screamer here. Which from the top, you cannot see the exit. Um, yeah, it's pretty well hidden underneath the exhaust there. It's really hard to see from the bottom. We've uh, sort of kept it nice and tucked up. So, But it is obviously very long. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. I didn't even bother painting this, I just ran out of time. I will, because there's only two bolts to get it on and off, so. I will one day actually pull this off and paint it and probably wrap it so that it's not this close to this, but for now, whatever. Anyway, um, I was gonna show you the bottom of it, but I literally don't have time to lift the car on the hoist and then drop it again, so. You might be able to shove the camera underneath. Oh, fuck. Ugh. Can you see? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. can you see YouTube? Can you see it? Can you see the sporter? Oh yeah, you can see it. There you go. So that's the exit there. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. Nice. 
You see his sporter, mate? It's in the back side <laughs> of the left corner. Just careful the back side of the left corner. There's a small sporter in there. Time for some illegal activities. Then uh, we'll load this back up on the trailer. Load this bitch back up. And um, yeah, we'll be able to eat and uh, start cruising home. That was legal activities. Legal, that's legal. the one. Private road activities. All right, so it does its job, does what it's meant to do. Uh, gate opens very early. Uh, it's sort of, ra it's running at like eight pound. Um, run it running up to eight pound, but the gate is opening a lot earlier than that. So, gonna take the other China gate that I've got. That has a seems to be a harder spring with this tomorrow, and I might change it out in the morning, uh, just because I feel like the spring in that waste gate, if it's that soft, I think it probably may just be creeping with exhaust gases. Um, so I wouldn't mind putting just a harder spring in it to start with rather than trying to get it up on the boost controller because if, uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. So anyway, um, yeah, we're all loaded up, ready to go. Um, now we're just going to have a quick tidy up, eat. It's about 7.30 or almost 8 o'clock, so we'll probably get back about 10.30. <coughs> um, and then have a sleep and then wake up and hit morning, morning session tomorrow, so... Cheers for watching as always guys, hopefully this is sorted, so Pete feel for the next episode where we are drifting at morning sesh. And uh, yeah, catch you later. Thanks Another for watching. Day. Another big day. Another big old day.